And we are live. We're live on both channels. What's up, guys? Uh, was, welcome. At, hold on just a second. I got to switch back here. Everybody's probably just seeing me. Let me turn that off. Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. It's starting to know us on both. Watch out. So I got both of you. Okay. And there's no way to pop you guys out even more. Yeah, I've got to turn. I've got to mute mine. We're having all kinds of technical problems. There we go. <laughs> Some of that's me, too. <laughs> I was going to pull out the pop-out screen. We all uh, we all got uh, windows open and different videos on. Welcome, everybody that's tuning in on Whiskey Blooded's channel and the Scotch Test Dummies. I'm Scott. I'm Bart. And Dave. with us with us tonight, Dave, go ahead. Sorry, I covered you. Introduce yourself. I'm Dave from Whiskey Blooded, different channel. We do a lot of bourbon. So nice to meet you guys. We are going to take a look at tonight. Now, Dave uh, focuses. He has done some scotches, different whiskeys. He, he loves the bourbons. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, Colonel E.H. Taylor four grain. And then coming over into Bart's wheelhouse. Bam. Lafroy Triplewood will come up next. That's what I've got poured out back there too. Uh, though my camera isn't apparently as good as your guys, but I've got four green and triple wood back there on the barrel today. Now you are in, you are, this is a temporary studio for you. Is that right? Where you're at? This is my office at home, but, um, well, yeah, this is where I usually do this stuff. Um, I do my normal videos in my dining room. And then this is where I shoot when I'm just on a, a webcam like today. So, well, thank you for joining us. And actually, we tried to hook up a while back, and you took about a two-month hiatus, uh, went off the grid, went, you know, black. Yeah. What was he, fly fishing? You out there fly fishing? <laughs> oh. No, uh, just new baby, new baby. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we have, a, we have a young infant at home. So, um, yeah, so that was pretty much the uh, – the hiatus there so and then work got real crazy too so scott um, claims to have a young infant at home too but he's just talking about me <laughs> that is too funny so yeah i watched a bunch of your guys videos it's actually funny because uh and, and either before i get into stuff either uh chat let us know let me know if we're echoing at all because that would probably be on my end and I may have to adjust something here, but um, but uh, it was funny because you guys had just done four grain. I just put out a four grain video today, and then um, and then um, Scott had mentioned it, so that was pretty uh, that was pretty cool. And then um, the triple wood, you guys did that. What was it? Was it about a year ago that you guys did that? Oh, at least probably, yeah. if not even. Yeah, it might have been about a year ago, probably last spring. You think it was then? Well, cool. yeah, I couldn't find any lore, which is what I mentioned I wanted to do. Apparently, that's really hard to find, or people really like it, or it's a limited release or something. But, but I really liked it the last time I tried it. So it's good. Scott turns. Scott saved me on that one. I'm a Lafroy fan, and I almost let her go. So you were thinking you wouldn't like the the uh, lore, or you were just done with some of the Lafroy products? I was gung ho to get it. There was a Karchus, Lafroy Karchus. I wasn't real thrilled on when I showed up to get this at, at uh, our local friendly neighborhood store. They were um, like, they were like, you're going to be disappointed. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, really? Yeah, I usually don't fall for that. Bruno will be the first one to tell you I don't fall for peer pressure even when it's necessary. Okay. And then, uh, and then I didn't get it, and he gets it of all things, and he's like, you're going to love it, and I did. So I went back and got it. There was still some when I went looking. Okay. So I got lucky. It is good. If you do get a chance to find it, it's it's a, it's a peat taster. It's good. I um, sampled it. Really small sample, but um, but I did like it a lot. I did like it a lot. So um, cool. Well, uh, so yeah, how, how do you guys want to do this? Do you want to crack into one and, and talk about it maybe and then answer some questions from, from each chat maybe? Yeah, uh, Bart skipped right over our intro. So anyway, Bart, we got the uh, Colonel E.H. Taylor four grain and the Lafroy triple wood. What are we going to do? We're going to test it! <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what? What is that? Let's test it. 
Awesome. Yeah, let me grab mine, guys. Uh, let me get mine in there. Ooh. I was warming up with a little Elijah Craig small batch. There you go. I actually right. warmed up with so, some Lafroig ten year cast strength. You can't start with you can't start with a Lafroig and then go to a bourbon. No, oh, I thought you were gonna taste. No, no. Uh -uh. See, I got I got a peat taste bud. It can snap in and out of the peat. <laughs> um so I tried this last live stream because I didn't even know live streaming was a thing. And then I just jumped on it. Think, I think one of you guys messaged me right after that. Um, so I tried this on stream last time, but I was just more like answering questions. I didn't even really get into the review of it at all. So I'm excited to see what you guys think of it. I watched your video on it, but um, kind of interested to see what you think on your second go around of it. So. Yeah, I was impressed. By the way, Ryan Summers says he he has to really be in the mood for the Pete. Basically, Ryan, I'm always in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in. Do, do you wake up in the middle of the night to have a shot of the Pete? Boom! I roll over and there's a bottle right there. I'm usually cuddling with it, much to my wife's dismay. Hey, I'm going to do a, uh, we, we uh, normally on our live streams, we don't do Scotch God shout outs, but I'm going to do a shout out real quick. Ooh, do it. Uh, and he's watching on, uh, on whiskey, whiskey, uh, I was going to say whiskey Dave's whiskey blooded's channel, but Troy Coots, I want to say C O U T S. He left a comment earlier that his buddies were coming over tonight. We were both his, their favorite review channels and they were going to oh, really? be watching from his house. Wow. Very hey, cool. Yeah. Nice shout out to Troy there and, and Troy's buddies. Troy's buddies. May, are there two or is it more than two buddies? He said his buddies. He said, my buddies are coming over. It's our two favorite review channels getting together and we're going to watch from my house. Like a Super Bowl. That's right. <laughs> it's whiskey with the E and, and whiskey without the E. Trying one thing here real quick, guys. Someone asked a request here. Yeah. A bigger picture of you guys. I'm trying to get that figured out really quick. I think I can do it. Look at that. Pradeep sipping on a, uh, a Four Oak uh, Laffy, Lafroy Four Oak. I think that's what he means by Laffy. I'm not sure. Ooh, Faircloth's got some Armagnac. That's the first time I've pronounced that correctly in like a month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually Armagnac. It's like some kind of uh, Klingon translation I'm pulling off. All right, sweet. I think I got it. Now people can see a bigger picture of you guys. It's probably just a shade delayed, but there we go. Um, yeah, right, cool. so, actually, most of the live streams will run about 30 seconds behind the actual cool. feed. Well, 15 to 30 seconds, somewhere in there. So. Cool. All right. Well, uh, so yeah, you guys want to maybe give this a little try here? You bet. I'm nosing it now. So this is uh, the, the the four grain Colonel E. H. Taylor. Uh, Colonel E. H. Taylor had believed that you had to kind of hand pick the best grains. You know, when you wanted corn or you wanted wheat or you wanted rye or barley, sometimes he would hand pick or hand select what he thought were the best batches. And supposedly that's what they've done with the four grain here. It's corn, rye, wheat, and barley. And this goes back to the days of Colonel Taylor actually kind of handpicking the best batches. Yes, that's why they call it four grain, huh? Yep. And it is bottled in bond as well, 50%. Hundred proof, yep. What does it cost you guys around your area? Uh, I believe retail was 79. Cool. And then so... Um, I don't know. For me on color, this one, I, I was mentioning this when I did my review. It's pretty copper to me. I don't know how your guys' look, but mine's real copper. Hmm. Yeah, I'd say it looks the same. It's got that real nice. Yeah, I, I'll go with your copper. Very nice. And then I, the nose on this one is kind of kind of interesting to me for compared to, I mean, a lot of bourbons have that similar kind of nose, but for me, this one's got like this weird, different kind of like, like oak bomb in it. Not not too much, but it's just a a weird um, 
like, the, like they mentioned the tannins, like you can, you can taste more of that like basey kind of oak uh, on the nose for me at least. Um, so that was a, that's a little different for me compared to like a normal Taylor where I get a lot more spice. What do you guys get? A lot of, I got my initial uh, nose from like a weeded bourbon. I got cherries right off of the bat, which accompanies a lot of weeded bourbons. A lot of cinnamon, a lot of caramel, and dusty corn. Mm. Yeah, I get your cherry. I get a real nice, like, uh, smooth, um, almost like a a real nice sugar, like granulated sugar on the sweetness, along with that caramel in there. And you're right, the the oak to me is really kind of muted and sweet. It's not like a, uh, it's not like a, it's not as strong as I thought it would be. I think uh, Scott got it real good. That like dusty oak. I think that's kind of what I'm smelling. Like the, like the, I don't know the older, maybe not older, but the, um, you know, the grainier oak. I guess is what I'm smelling in there. And that's probably the barley messing with me a little bit because that's not you know normally something that uh, all four of these grains being in a bottle. It's not always something that we're used to in bourbon. So especially with a lot going with high rise nowadays, it seems like a lot of good bourbons are going with high rye now. So. Hmm. Guys ready to try it? This was this was one that really improved on me as it sat in the glass and I spent more time with it. And generally I can tell if I'm if I'm digging something by how many notes I'm pulling out of it. And it was one that as I sat there and kept sipping on it and gave it more and more time to open up, more notes kept coming in to me. Yeah, I agree. It's got a real it's a it's a good noser. A lot of times you know, I'll spend more time nosing a scotch than I would a bourbon because a bourbon, I'll get that first instinct, but I'm not just stuck nosing it for, for a length of time. But this one's got a real pleasant nose. Some of that cherries, I think, is what you're talking about, too. It gives that little bit of cherry along with that sweetness. Yeah, it's got nice butterscotch and cherries on the palate. Hmm. Creamy and buttery. Oh, we're trying. Yep, we're gonna try. All right. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'd already been. I've been in for a couple. <laughs> yeah, be in. And then uh, a uh, whiskey blooded triple cap says he wants you to describe your bottles in the background when you get a chance. We can get there in a, in a bit. He's he's liking the look of your collection. That's for who? That'll be triple cap. He wants he wants you to describe your whiskey collection to a oh, to my. the fans. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely do that. After we finish this one out between the two, maybe we'll take yes. a quick second. It's a little hard to do because this camera's not great, but I'll just point out by hand. Sure. Um, so when I taste this one, I mentioned this in my in my review that I just did today. And um, when I taste this one, I don't know about you guys, but up front, like, is it really sweet for you guys? Because I, I get a, a big, you know, sweet vanilla, like the butterscotch you had mentioned. It's surprisingly sweeter than than I thought it would be. I've gotten both cotton candy, uh, sugar sweetness, and a uh, the candy corn on the. Yeah, palate. I mentioned that too in my review. Candy corn is a perfect way to describe this. I kind of like pictured it mentally as like this big piece of oak wrapped in like candy corn and sugar and caramel, and I, I think that the sugar end of this it's really for me, like really sugary, um, definitely a lot of that candy corn taste, which is kind of unique because you get that a little bit in bourbon, but then spice usually kind of plays back in. But this one is a little more overall. I think it's I would use the 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 the, the, the amateur word, I guess the the smooth. It, it really is. It doesn't have a bad bite to it with this one. So yeah, it's good. The the candy corn's kind of got that waxy sweetness. Is kind of yeah. what I pick up. Yeah, and it um, it just stays there the whole time, which is which is pretty pretty amazing to taste that that candy corn taste the whole way through. At least for me, that's it follows. It's sweet in the beginning. It's sweet when the oak sets in, and then a little bit of burn at the end. And, and I always get with Taylor products. I don't know if you guys get this, but in the finish for me, I always get this like tobacco, like pepper, like clove pepper finish. Um, and, and I just get a little bit of that, not quite as much as the other Taylor products. I would agree, just a very slight rye finish coming through to make that spiciness, I think. You bet. 
And I'm interested got, to see what, what someone new to whiskey would think of this bottle and see if they'd really like it or if it's, you know, too, too much going on. Hmm. This was one, as I sat down with it at first, when I opened it and started sipping, I thought, that's eh, about an 88, 89 coming in. It's good. But then, like I say, as I sat there and it opened up and I spent more and more time with it, on our review, I gave it a 92. Bart was a little lower. Still good. Bart's a harder scorer, a harder grader than I am. Uh, I don't even remember. Where was that? Was it 87, 88? I think you ended 89 is what you okay. gave it. Yeah, for me, I think for bourbon, this is this is really like if this this was still priced, uh, you know, in a way that was easy to, to to pick it up, and it's not unfortunately now. But um, I think this is this is an awesome, awesome bourbon, like sipping bourbon. Like um, there's some sometimes where I want like a really big like rye bite, or or if I'm really like feeling for spicy, I might reach for like a, a high proof wild turkey. Um, but for me, this is a really nice, like any, any night kind of sipping bourbon. I mean, it's, it's got that sugar bomb to it. I mean, it really is, as you had mentioned, that sugary candy corn and it's just really gentle and it kind of rocks you to sleep. And it, I think it's, it's, it's perfect for the proof. I mean, we, we could, I don't know if you guys are like this, but I've gotten more into, uh, cask and, and barrel strengths lately. So, but it's yeah, good for the definitely. proof. So if you're looking for something gentle, it's really good, really good. I, and I've got in my notes, I actually spent quite a bit of time with it neat before I even added water. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it was so good even at the 50% right out of the bottle. Now, let me ask you this, though. So in the spring, March or April, they're supposed to release another batch of this. Would you buy it again? Yeah, if I can get it for the right price, uh, not for the price that, um, you know, things are going for now for this. I mean, it, 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 I think we talked about this in our our little introduction earlier but in, in michigan where i'm at this the state sets a minimum price and the, the stores can charge whatever they want for it and it's a pretty competitive market near ann arbor where i am so it's hard to find stuff if, if i was to try to find this today before the new batch i'd probably be paying like 200 for it and and i don't know if i'd buy another bottle at 200 um that, that's a tough thing for me to say so but if, if i could pick it up sub 125 yeah i would actually for sure buy another bottle absolutely yeah but i agree if, if i come the spring if i find it if i see it on the shelf i'll def i would definitely pick up another bottle so is that how it is for you guys you guys uh are you do you have state set pricing or can places charge whatever they want for stuff yeah they can yeah they can charge whatever they want um the, the liquor store that we frequent the most and work with they give us some breaks um, and they're usually retail, maybe five dollars higher, not much. If this was on the shelf over there, it's probably eighty nine dollars. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. would pay MSRP for it. I wouldn't pay over a hundred for it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, I think this at a hundred or less. I think. I'd go. I'd go one quarter. I'll see. I'm raising you twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, here, one fifty. One fifty. One fifty. One fifty. No, Marco, no. Marto, give me 150. I think 150 is getting to that price where, um, you know, I guess if I really needed it or if I ran out of this and had none left, then I would maybe pay that. But I've already got this one. I've got one backup um, that I bought. And, and so I, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to pay, I think more than a hundred for it just right now. But if I ran out and I was really wanting to show this bottle to someone, I might pay a little more. Like I said, I think this is a really good beginner one. I think a lot of beginners would really like this because of all the sugar, all the sugar, all that candy corn taste. I, I, think yeah. it, I think it would taste well with someone just getting into it. And if you had friends over and they're like, hey, you do the whiskey thing, right? And they're like, well, what, what can you have me try that I'll really like? I think this is a bottle I'd pull out. Bart likes to give them barrel proof, high, high yes. um, burn their throat stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that'll so be you, his explanation. You go straight for the, uh, the the bathroom moonshine, huh? <laughs> right. Yeah, Scott will give him like a bottom shelf ten dollar rock gut and tell him try this bourbon and see what you think. You can't give him benchmark, Scott. That's just not fair when you have company over. Benchmark uh, is not what you should be giving to your guests. Probably the best critique of of what I had on my beginner whiskeys I did here was that the only way my list is good is if I'm there or someone knowledgeable is there to walk someone through the list. My list is kind of gets progressively complex, would you say, Scott? 
I was looking at comments. I didn't even hear, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you need to watch comments more often. Just go. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I tried to get your chats open, but I can't see them, but I can kind of see them scrolling through on, uh, I opened your channel to put it in the background. So, oh, okay. Um, so I see a couple of them, uh, rolling through and a couple of people I think have already made fun of me for basically only reviewing bourbon. So, so thank you, Scotch Fest dummy fans. I'm, I'm glad I'm here to help. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Sooner or later, you'll start to branch out. That's just, we started with just Scotch. Well, I was telling him, um, I, I don't have a lot, but I have a couple good things. I've, I started with the non peteds like the Glen Morangies and the, um, a, a couple of the Glen Libets. And um, I just now got into some of the, the peteds and it's definitely opening some stuff up for me. I'm actually excited to try this triple wood again with, with someone else because I've I've uh, never tried it with anyone else, so I, I'm kind of interested to see if I'm even in the right realm of uh, of what you guys think if this is a bottle that I should be buying again or not. So I just have to say, where is it at? Oh, Whiskey Watch is questioning me. I would go 125 for the four grain. <laughs> I saw Claire got your uh, quote in the background. We've had a few. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm sure we did. And then Dan E. threw out 44 Magnum. Boom. I, heavy stick, baby. I walk with a big stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, now, uh, is it the whiskey of the year? That's the question, right? Is it the world whiskey of the year to you guys? It's good. Um, there's got to be something better, though. I mean, it's... Bourbon of the year, maybe? It's good. Mm, uh, maybe. maybe uh, yeah, maybe a little bit closer there. Yeah. I would have to think. I don't know what all has come out this year or what. Um, and I'm sure some suggestions will start rolling in here. I'm trying to think of this year what we've done that stands out bourbon-wise. Bart, anything coming to the top of your head? Oh, boy. See, if I think on just in regards of what's come out, you know, for Murray's Bible, I – that's when I start thinking, well, what year did this come out or did we buy it, but it really came out in 2016. So I can't really judge year to year. That's why even on our own list at the, at the beginning of the new year. So the beginning of 2018, we do a top five of what we tried in 2017 or, or the year prior. And that's really the only way I can do it. But well, it's like, um, it's good. The other Taylor products. What what have you guys tried else from Taylor? Oh boy, what it's is small, this? It's small batch, and we've had samples of the barrel proof, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Now we have the single barrel and the rye all on the shelves here. I've, we've just yeah. never picked them up. Yeah, I haven't um, tried the rye. I've got it in the back there, and single barrel is you just you know single barrel. It's hit or miss. The small batch is. Uh, more consistent. Sorry, I'm trying to reply to comments here at the same time. Cool. You guys want to, did you finish that one? Can't see your. Almost. Uh, almost. Almost. Now, for you, and so is this in your top 10 bourbons of the year or is it higher than yeah. that or where does it sit? No, no. Yeah, it definitely is. I like that. I like the, uh, so for Scotch Fest Dummies fans that, that maybe don't go into bourbon as much, if, if you see a four grain out there, I'd pick that up. Uh, Old Forester's 1920. Uh, I really like that this year. Um, the birthday bourbon this year is really good. Old Forester birthday bourbon is actually good this year. Um, you can see kind of one on my shelf here, but a lot of stores are getting these Knob Creek um, store pick single barrels or yeah, single barrels, and some of them are really fantastic, so those are good. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the newer stuff I'm seeing out here. The new Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs, um, you guys probably know this, and I think a lot of bourbon fans are. I'm a huge Elijah Craig fan. That's the whole bottom half of my shelf down there is all Elijah Craig stuff. Amen, um, brother. Good man. Preach it. Preach it. Yeah. So the new Barrel Proofs, the, the batch B, the uh, – B five seventeen. Yeah, that's fantastic. The one twenty seven proof is pretty good. I, if I was, you know, forced to buy one, I'd buy that that batch B, the uh, the one Scott mentioned. So that's on my top one, one of my top ones for the year. Here's, here's one of the best ones though, the sixty nine point seven, and this is the last 
Mm. I've got a couple bottles of the 68 uh, percenters. This is the okay. last of my 69.7. It's about gone. That's a good one. Our good what is, that one is that 140 point? What is that? 139.4. One yeah. Our guitarist old Shakes Pennington about drained mine, dead. <laughs> I have a 136 that I haven't opened, the old style bottle. I, I really am going to be sad the day that that's gone. I love those those old ones. I, I mean, they're still the same thing, but I just feel like uh, the first Elijah Craig barrel proof I had was probably four years ago, and I wish I would have bought more of them, and they were just fantastic back then. Mm. Now I can't remember. I saw. I can't remember who asked, but somebody wanted to know what. What do we mean by peated uh, islas? So scotch that comes from uh, isla is uh, not always, but almost all of them use a peat moss to smoke the barley, which imparts a heavy earthy smoke to the whiskey. And uh, so when we say peated, that's that's what we're talking about. It's usually a real smoky, ashy creosote all through there, even tarry sometimes. A lot of people, my, when I was brand new to whiskey, I did not like peated. Yeah, yeah it, took me, too. it took me longer to warm up Bart than you. You, uh, you grabbed on and started running uh, early on. It took me a while. I resisted. Uh, I finally started coming over and then full swing now. But I still prefer a sherried whiskey over peated. You do. But there's yes. some there's some damn good peated ones out there. Oh yeah. And we're fixing to do one. Lafroig. Bam. Triple wood. Trip wood, baby. Trip wood. And the background oh, kind of Port Charlotte Scottish barley back here, but we won't be touching that tonight. I uh, watched a video or two of you guys from a couple of years ago, like two, like maybe about a year ago, and I, and I think Scott, you were not into the scotch yet, or maybe it was about a year and a half ago. So yep. that might have been when we were doing the Lafroy shootout. The, yeah, yeah, no, it was uh, uh Lafroy Art Bag Ten. Oh, there you go. That was a, that's one of our most popular videos right there. Yeah. That's the verses, baby. They battle. Hmm. All right, so I'm gonna grab mine. Um, for real quick, while you guys are pouring, so for whoever asked, um, this is just a part of my collection. Most of it's in the, the basement. Uh, this is my office, but I just picked that up and I was too lazy to take it downstairs. So in the barrel, there's all of the tailors except for the, um, I think I don't have the, the cured oak. The first row is uh, Old Foresters, the, the whole line except for uh, a couple of the cheaper ones and the birthday bourbon and then down below I have Elijah Craig 1823 a little grenade that they sold at the gift shop and then a bunch of barrel proofs and a 12 year age statement one and then on the side the only things I'm overly proud about really I have a couple of Blanton's golds a bunch of high wests and some of those Kentucky owls so other than that it's pretty much probably the stuff most of you guys have at home that's the great part about bourbon is that you don't got to spend you know 500 bucks to get a good bottle so that's my well, question. Unless Jim Murray calls it the whiskey of the year. Then you're going to have trouble finding it. Let me go grab my Lafroy. Or if it's got Pappy in front of it. Yeah, there you go. Now, I will say Northern Harvest Rye stayed cheap even after he listed at number one. <laughs> he made about 14 million bottles of it. That might have something to do with it. That's right. That's right. I think it even got cheaper. Now, I loved it. But go ahead. Go ahead. You got the trip wood there. Yep. So, um, Yes, we'll move on to this one. So yeah, the uh, the triple wood. So you even I, did like that I, said, one. I kind of wanted to try that ten year to compare it, but um, I've already had a good amount of sampling out of this one, and I've I've liked it so far. So now Claire is asking, do you have one of the tornado E H Taylors? Oh no, I do not. I, those go for. I've never seen one in Michigan, even when like someone stockpiling it. I've never even seen a friend with one, um, and from what I see, they're going for. Over a thousand, thousand to yeah. two thousand, and I don't know that they're supposed to be good. I think it's more um, the story, marketing. Yeah, yeah, and just the limited. I mean, there was only so many bottles of it. Uh, it's pretty rare. So yeah, I mean, it's just it's an E. H. Taylor uh, small batch, isn't it? It just yeah, it, sur it, it just, survived. Uh, the it, 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 stuff from what I understand, it, stuff that was sitting in warehouse. They were just 
you know, aging for whatever they were going to do with it, but it was just regular Taylor and, you know, you know, made it through. So yeah, it survived, I, I, it survived the tornado and then was exposed to the elements for a little while in the barrel. And yep. yeah, I think it sat in the sun a little bit. They said, Ooh, that sounds like Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Survived the tornado, sat in the sun for a little bit, kind of hung out in the elements. Bam, that, that should be called like the, the Scott model. The other thing for your fan that asked, uh, so supposedly, I've never had it, even can't find it at a bar, but the, supposedly the cured oak, a lot of people say is better than any of the pappies. So if you ever get a chance to try that cured oak, if you're at a bar, you can grab a sample somewhere or just see a bottle randomly. A lot of people say it's better than pappy. But, I mean, it's different, obviously, but a lot of people say they'd prefer it over over that. So, okay, moving into the Laphroaig, Triple Wood. Yes. Uh, triple Wood, it's been in former bourbon barrels, then quarter casks, and then European oak sherry casks. Mm, like mm. a traveling sailor. For, bottled at 48% ABV. Look at that. Triple matured for peat oak. And subtle sweetness. That's good. Not chill filter. Does Lafroy usually chill filter? Do you guys know? Oh boy, I don't but know. Price, I, I would assume they're not. I don't think they do. I'm looking at a cash strength. I mean, they don't proclaim it. I don't think on here, but I'd have to read and look. Mm. I get a little bit, like a hint of that brine, that seashore. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. Big, That's good. Big blast of uh, brininess on it, and yeah, peat. it's like a it's like a wave breaking. You guys probably hear this a lot with newer Scotch drinkers, but I get a lot of of metal, like a like a burnt metal. Mm. Iodine would it be? Yep. Yep, a little bit of that. Yep, you get a little iodine. Kind mm. of a like a subtle campfire for me too. Some of that smoke, mm -hmm. a little subtle campfire there. I mean, that's just, that's what's got me so excited about scotch is you guys, I don't know how it is in your market, but Scott, no one cares about scotch around here. So I can walk in and buy a bottle of pretty much anything scotch, maybe not the super rare stuff, but I can buy pretty much everything. Whereas bourbon, it's impossible to find. So I'm actually excited to get more into scotch and, you know, see what I can find out there because I mean, the nose on this, it's just complex. I mean, it's so complex. It hits so many more different points than bourbon usually does. I can't believe the, the Michiganites are not caring about scotch. They like it. Just their bourbon heads. Well, we got a couple fans up there, Amy and Amy's husband. That's true. Big, uh, send us, big scotch fans. Yeah, they, they send us chips from the local Michigan area. Areola? What would you say? <laughs> area. I don't know. Yeah, what part of Michigan? I usually I had a buddy from Michigan, and the, the hold up the hand and point where you're at tells us a lot. Um, Detroit. Oh, there. You're so in Detroit. Like there. Gotcha. Yeah. So Ann Arbor, University of Michigan, supposedly a good football team. That's uh, where I went to school, and that's we're real close to Ann Arbor. Cool. Yeah. Now I will tell you, uh, and I told you when we just did our test run. At first, and for quite a while, I had assumed you were deep in the south. I thought you were in bourbon territory as much uh, of the, the good bottles as you was getting and, and reviewing. It, um, it surprised me when I found out you was in Michigan. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I get lucky, but, um, I mean, I still i am missing some really important bottles from my collection. I've never found a Buffalo Trace antique collection before, and if I do... I'm sending you guys a sample and we'll, we'll try it together, but um, I've never found one. So I've, I've never gotten one of those. I've never gotten any Pappy or Old Rip or any of that. Um, but I also got into it, you know, probably about a year before it really went wild. 2010, I got into it. Um, and then 2012 is, I think, when I started the channel. 13, 14, 14, I started the channel. And um, and then it was it was up and running. And since then, it's been really hard. And when I first started, I did what most normal people do. Like, I saw those more expensive bottles, and I never bought them thinking, like, I don't know if I'm, I'm even going to like it. And looking back at it now, back then, you could, you know, 
pretty much pick up any of these tailors off of a shelf anywhere. So. Well, I think when you first get started, you're always like, wow, a $30 bottle, that's expensive. Yeah. I'll never spend $50 on a bottle. <laughs> and before you know it, you're up to, a, I'll never spend a hundred dollars on a bottle. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it's, Five hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think you get to the point like me where you're like, I'll buy a bottle just to finish off this little like art display that I've got back there. You know, it's like I don't even plan on opening it, but I have six of the seven different ones that they make, and I just want it to look cool. Yeah, like, you got to complete the collection. Yeah, so that's the fun part. Like that bottle of birthday bourbon that I have down there, I only bought it because I have pretty much most of the other ones. And then I see people in like the groups that I'm in on Facebook and stuff. And they've got the birthday bourbons all the way back to like 2009. And, and I'm just, it just shocks me. And, and it, it's a scary road to go down, but you know, it's, it's cool at the same time. You know, there's a lot of people getting into it right now. And when people come over and they know that that's what you're into and, and they want to, you know, you know, go through your collection. It's just like any other collection. If someone else shows interest in it, um, it can be a really cool thing to show off. So, mm, you bet. so um, yeah, I'm going to give this one a try. So uh, it's been, I don't know, probably a couple weeks since I tried this one last. Yeah, somebody asked exactly how peated this is. The nose is not overly peated. It's not climbing out, punching you in the face. It's more of that brine sea salt. And I, I get a good amount of sweetness with this. Um, it's probably the bourbon barrel, I'm guessing, that's doing it. But um, compared to, like, the, the Freud... Um, What's what's the cheaper one? Is it is it the quarter quarter cask? Is it quarter cask is cheap. The really the Freud straight ten is is really inexpensive too. That should yeah. well that should be the cheapest other lineup. I think the quarter cask usually comes or at least in our area. The ten would be the bottom end or the 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 entry of the Lafroigs. So I haven't tried the ten. I've tried the quarter at a bar before, and I remember that not being nearly as sweet as what this is. It's not really all that sweet, but up front I do get some sweetness. A quarter cask is just all peat and slap you around 10 times. You wake up naked in the street and you don't even remember what your mom's name is. Yeah. So for, for me in my area, I told Scott this earlier, the quarter cask is cheaper than the 10. The 10, I think, goes for 80. Holy. So, yeah. yeah. So that's fun. But maybe that's just sought after. I'm not sure. But yeah, I do really like this. Like when I taste it, um, it's surprising how much different the taste is than the nose, and I think the uh, all those three woods really throw you off a little bit. But when I taste it, I get the like bourbon sweetness up front, but the middle of this is really where I think it shines. It's uh, it's got a lot of those like I get a little of that campfire, a little of that smoke, a little bit of that like metal and and that like like meaty like kind of like bacony salty taste in the middle, yeah. and that really is makes me happy. So. Yeah, it's got that savoriness in there with that salted, almost like a salted meat. You're right. Now, I'm going to show you, before we get done, I talked to Dave beforehand about a little uh, a cheat or a hack to turn this Lafroig into the lore. So after we get done looking at this here, give it a few more minutes, I'm going to show, this was showed to us by Jesse. Bart, you know what I'm talking about? Oh. Something something we can add to this, just a few drops that almost imitates that rich, full, sherry sweetness of the lore, which yeah. Dave was looking for and couldn't get for the show. I have, I, uh, yeah, actually, well, we can do that whenever you guys want, but I do have that ready, so. All right. Well, that, that cheat that I'm talking about, and it was showed to us by Jesse, um, the lore, the Ardbeg Dark Cove are heavily peated whiskeys that have also been sherry casked. And to me, the lore, both the lore and the Dark Cove are delicious. They're both expensive. To imitate that, you can take a Lafroig 10. We're going to try it with the Lafroig triple wood here. And we're going to add just a few drops of a barrel proof bourbon. I'm in. Don't I will see. add, so mine might throw us off a little bit because I'm adding something a little more rye based, but I will add a single barrel shiny sticker, single, single barrel barrel strength, um, 57.4% for roses. Okay. And what happens is the high ABV and the sweetness of the bourbon 
and and we've done this and it's it comes out surprisingly similar to the lore or the dark cove either one bart you got some you're gonna add do you want to um no you're not driving anywhere i know um my elijah craig barrel proof it must enter my mouth pure <laughs> so you know here's a funny thing that you guys might see or agree on i've had you uh bert right bart. Bert, bart you're good yes um are the third person now to tell me it's a that's a total scotch fan that they love elijah craig barrel proof but that they don't really like a lot of other bourbons i wonder why that is it is powerful and present all at the same time it is it is the bourbon that literally when i tried it i went wow and we nicknamed it the bottle of wow and uh i mean there's just i mean it's just strength i mean it's like an american strength that comes in it's so flavorful so powerful spicy you can bring it down you can play with it you can uh, I mean, you can just do so much with it and check all the flavors as you take the ABV down. It's just a very fun and flavorful whiskey. Yeah. The spice on it's pretty amazing to me. It, it is. I'll tell you what, no, I'll tell you what it is most because even if you go back and you look at, at the majority of bourbons we had done leading up to Elijah Craig barrel proof. And I think, when you look, say, a scale of, of 1 to 100, most bourbons are in that 40 to 60 range. Right. N 9 out of 10 bourbons fall right in the middle. Very few have bring something to the table that makes it stand out. And the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof was probably the first one that we had that really stood up and yelled, hey, look at me. I'm over here. I'm different, and I'm what bourbon should be. It kind of comes up, slaps you in the face, and says, you want more of that? And you're like, yes, I do. It's like a red-haired girl. <laughs> Are you um, married to a redhead? I'm not, but I was okay. at one point. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Sometime right. you can check the show, and you'll get the Cliff Notes story from Scott on what happened in the first wedding to the redhead. <laughs> The short answer is she, she said, Hey, we're moving to Kansas city. And I said, or she said, Hey, uh, I got a job in Kansas city. And I said, when are we moving? And she's, what'd she say, Scott? She said, we ain't. Oh, <laughs> see that. And then you break out a bottle at that point in time. No, that was the red end. Now, now I'm married to a gal from Belgium. That's not true. She's Puerto Rican. That was for Scott. He was going to chime in at any point, I was sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we're you guys try this with the with the mix? Yeah, or that's all right. Uh, Scott, you're just doing this with me. So let's um yep. let's I changed mine a little bit, so let's see how it changed. Now it really takes probably a teaspoon maybe of the barrel proof. And I had just added a few drops. I'm actually gonna throw just a little bit more in there. Yeah, I just went by by eye. I poured in probably about a teaspoon, and I'm trying to move it around so it does what it's supposed to do a little bit quicker. This was a good hack, and I found it uh, really surprising. And like I say, it really ups the sweetness of the Lafroig. Hmm. I've mixed a couple of High West products together before, and you know, mostly just bourbons, but um, it had some cool hmm. effects to it. I mixed a Burai with a. Um, with a double rye, and uh, it was really cool. It, it just added some some cool stuff to it. So I don't know. That's that's a whole another thing. I mean, everyone's. I I have an infinity bottle. I don't know if you guys have caught on to the infinity bottle, but you pour something in, kind of that you think might work at the end of every bottle. So there's like two different Knob Creeks and Elijah Craig, uh, some some kind of rye. I can't remember uh, Henry McKenna in there right now. And so every time you pour something in it, it changes it a little bit. And sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. But that's kind of like what we're doing here. We're changing the composition of the whiskey. I'll say it just from the, the sip I just took. Boom. It's there. That's nice. Wow. 
And uh, Jesse, Jesse is tuning in. I hadn't seen him commenting, but he does say that uh, this hack saves you some money. So I mentioned I tried a sample of Lore, and I'm very surprised that it did this to it. So one, one, Lore has got to be higher strength, right? Is that part of what I'm tasting, that Lore is higher strength than Triple Wood? Uh, actually, no. I'm looking at 48%. It's the same. Okay. I wonder why. But it kind of dumped something down in there. Like, it dumped some of the – like the meat taste, I think, and it for me it brought out some more of the smoke, like the real, like the very end. I get a lot more like dry smoke, like really dry, salty smoke. And I remember that when I tried the lore, I really loved all of that like dry, salty smoke at the end. And I I'm mad I couldn't find another bottle of lore because um, like the only time I tried it was when a friend brought it over, and I'm mad I couldn't find any. I really loved it, so. But still, we still see uh, it's still on the shelves here. So probably if you look around, I think you would be able to find it. So that for the Dark Cove. The Dark Cove is Ardbegs. It was a uh, each year they do a um, it's for the is it for the Phage Isle. For the committee or whatever, or is that something different? Well, the the uh, I'm pretty sure it's for the Phage Isle, which is like a big uh, island festival they have each year, and each year they do a, a release. And they have a Ardbeg has a committee that puts one together each year. Okay. Now the committee release is generally a higher proof. So there's so there's an Ardbeg Dark Cove committee release, and there's okay. an Ardbeg Dark Cove non-committee release. Surprisingly so, different too. Not not much, really. Just ABV. I mean, and that ABV does bring a little bit more flavor to the table, but uh, both delicious. Um, and so if you had to put the because a lot of people, when they talk about the lore, seem to also talk about the Ard, Ardbeg. Not just the Dark Cove, but like, you know, the Ardbeg, like... Oogie Doll. Yeah, so which one would you guys choose between the two? If you, let's just say, between Dark Cove and, and lore, which one strikes you better? Dark Cove, baby. Really? <laughs> and what are those run near you guys? I think they're about 100 here. One, 120, 130, if you can find them. They're, they're long gone from our area. Right. Yeah, I think they're mm -hmm. tough to find here, too. Yeah, the the I'm a Lafroig fanboy, but the uh, the Ardbeg Dark Cove CR blew my socks off. Good enough. Yeah, yeah I, I would say initial initial and initial impression the Dark Cove probably takes uh, the lore. I'd have to go side by side to see, and it probably does stand out above the lore as well. Yeah, we're looking at a couple like uh, peated shootouts, and I've done a couple little tests, so nothing to tease, but whoo, Dark Cove. Good. Going to have to look for it. I, I remember seeing a lot of them around. Actually, there was a market here that got a whole like allocation, and they did an opening with it, and they had like an hard bag day, which I don't know if they do near you guys, but every once in a while like they might pick a – like a party store or a market, and then the art bag reps will come in, and that was one thing. If you bought a ticket to the event, you could buy one bottle of that. And I remember a lot of people going, but I didn't go. Wow. We got a suggestion from uh, Tom R. as well that says to tell you about the Compass Box Peat Monster, and that is what converted me into being a peat head. And to the Compass Box line as well. Compass Box, Dave, if you don't know, are blends. Uh, John yeah. Glazer started Compass yeah. Box. Yeah, and he does fabulous blends, uh, different ones. But uh, so start I with two that I that I like. Um, I have the Flaming Heart from Fifteen. Nice. And then I have the Not a Luxury Whiskey, also I believe from Fifteen. Um, um, maybe, but, yeah. And so the not this is not a luxury whiskey is uh, way more expensive. But I prefer the Flaming Heart. Um, it's really, really nice, really complex. Yeah, the Flaming Heart is all, is all peat, and the not a luxury whiskey is sherry. Yeah, and it's got a grain whiskey in there too, so yeah. it's a little sweeter. It's a little more like bourbon. So I, but I do like that Flaming Heart a lot. I'm actually um, hoping that uh, we can get some more of that. I've, I've gone through most of that bottle. It's one of my favorite, you know, blendeds that I've had. But I don't like a lot of the other ones. I don't like the. Um, I didn't like the uh, Circus King Street one. I didn't like that one nearly as much. Some of their yeah, cheaper that's, stuff. That's that's one of their entry uh, yeah. entry bottles. Now I will tell you though, pick up the Lost Blend if you can find it. It's a little over a hundred. Um, very well peated. 
as well. And the Pete Monster that Bart recommends. Pete, Pete Monster is one of their uh, core ranges. Uh, Lost Blend is one of the special releases that they did. And you should be able to still find it around as well if you look. So why the... Uh, I opened up your window a little more. Scott, why the... Uh, Bron is that a Broncos head back there? A Broncos hat? Yes. So I haven't, I haven't picked that up from the channel. I watched like 10 videos, but they were just kind of random. So did you grow up there? I am from Northwest Kansas, uh, a Bron uh, which is closer to Denver than it is Kansas City. Okay. And my grandma lived in Greeley, Colorado, which is where the Broncos had their spring camp for years. And we used to go out and watch them practice. So I grew up in the 70s watching the Broncos. Bart is from Denver, Colorado area. So. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, I grew up in the mountains, a little town called Evergreen. And then as soon as I could, I moved downtown Denver and suburb Littleton just because uh, for some reason I didn't want to live in the beautiful mountains. I wanted to live in a city. Gotcha. Well, cool. Are they good this year? I don't watch much football. They but started the good. Day. They started good, and they've gone into the tank. Yeah, there you go. It's like the Lions. <laughs> <laughs> Have you watched? Have you seen the video on YouTube, Dave, for Pure Michigan and the Detroit, why we are Detroit Lions fans? No, oh. no. I'm, it sounds like it's a it's a parody video. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, watching them play is sometimes pretty funny too. So, <laughs> well, the Actually, best line is that everybody's wearing a twenty year old jersey for Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we had a couple of good players. That's all that matters. So yeah, I'm glad you showed me this trick for this. I, you know, I still like the regular one. It's just it's different. It's cool that you can change it like that. I'm I'm gonna try it maybe with a couple other barrel proofs too. So yeah, uh, really, and really, it came up from Jesse just with like the little Freud ten or the Ardbeg ten, and nothing that because like this triple wood already has some sweetness in it from the bourbon barrels and the uh, sherry barrels that it's been in. Yeah, but if you take just like the standard Lafroy tin, that's just peat. Well, Lafroy tin is a good, good peat and a nice citrus sweetness as well. But when you add that, that uh, like me with Elijah Craig barrel proof in there, it really just ups the ups the sweetness factor, and really simulates that that sherry sweetness that you'll get in a heavy peated whiskey. So Ooh. I'm trying. To, I'm pulling up your guys' stream right now. Um, there we go. So now I can now I can see you guys. So it looks like you guys have 64 people watching you. So I was gonna say I usually like to try to do these for about an hour. So we got about five ten minutes left. You maybe want to do some questions. Maybe if your viewers have questions for me or if they have questions just for you, you guys want to do some viewer questions real quick. Sounds good to me. We got a lot of football comments going on right now. And there's baseball on right now too. I think which is probably not the greatest, but. Well, yeah, oh, I, I know what we do. need to do, Bart. We need to do uh, our tailored milestones giveaway. Ooh, yeah, you do need. Yeah, let's do that. Hold up. Quick. You want uh, Siri to choose our number? Yeah, yeah. Grab Siri and have her randomly. Didn't you have a lot of people put in for that contest? I'm pulling it up right now. We gave away tailored milestone glasses. They are a kind of a rocks glass and a uh, Glen Cairn glass hybrid. A Glen, or I said a Glen Cairn on steroids. Yeah, I prefer to say it's like a seventh month, seven month pregnant Glen Cairn. So I had a hundred. We had one hundred and thirty three people register for those free for those those glasses. Wow. So we're going to ask Siri for a random number here between one and one hundred and thirty three. Actually, we'll go between zero and one hundred and thirty four. Hmm. What if it says zero? Choose a random number. Oh, hold on. You messed me up there. Well, yeah. that, if it says zero, we'll do it again, but we know it's going in between. Wow. Choose a random number between zero and 134. The answer is 15. 15? Did, did you hear it? Yeah, it was kind of low. I didn't have my volume up very high. It was 15. You can say between one and 134. It'll do that. Thank you for that information. I'm just saying, I don't know why you're using zero. If it says zero, you'll be like, well, we're going to do it again. I draw again. 
<laughs> 15, Ryan Creamer. I don't know if you can see it. No, but if we it's washing out. Ryan Rian Creamer, R I A N C R E A M E R. We'll send you a message and we'll get your address and we'll get you a free set of the tailored milestone glasses coming your way. Boom. Go comments. Yeah. They're all laughing about number 15 and uh, who won and somebody and Jesse was robbed. <laughs> The old aardvark was robbed. Let's see who came close real quick. Who was number, that was 15. Number 14 was Jesse Page. Number 16 was Aqua Vitae. Oh. Your, cha your channel has already um, uh, invented the word creamed. They got creamed by Ryan Creamer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty yeah. funny that picked up. Congrats, Creamer. See, I don't think Jesse Voison's going to need it anyway. I hear the military's calling up pilots. I think he's going to be back in the uniform. Yeah, he's going to be back flying. He's going to be flying. Earth. He thought he was done. Wrong. Hey, uh, Dave, Tom R. is asking on your feed, do you have a Patreon? Yeah, I was just actually looking at that. That's one of the things. Uh, I had like two or three things. I know we're running pretty close here, but I had two or three things that uh, – I wanted to ask you guys, and maybe ask joint channels and hit two audiences at once. Um, so, number one, you guys set one up, right? You set up a Patreon account. Yes. Cool. And so, first of all, was that overly complicated to set up, or was it pretty pretty easy? Easy. If I can Bart, do it, it's easy. That's what I'm going to say. Bart did it, so it must have been easy. <laughs> and uh, so, viewers on both ends, so how do you guys feel about – as you? You guys probably know we, we don't really make any money from YouTube. Uh, actually, in fact, I think my yearly total is is about fifty bucks. So they don't they don't really pay anything, um, and not that we need to be paid. But is there you know the desire to contribute for certain events, whether that's you know like viewer events or certain bottles, etc. So um, what do you guys feel about Patreon accounts? I don't know if any of your People have really jumped into that. So yeah, we love it. And Tom R just jumped in and gave us ten bucks. Hey, there you go. Little donation come in. Thanks, Tom R. Well, I'll tell you, we set up. Bart got the Patreon set up, and I think we went about a year with nothing. We didn't plug it though. We didn't even tell anybody we had it. I think yeah. we did it. I think we did it first, and then nothing was happening. We kind of gave up on it. We was about ready to pull the the plug on it, and and then. Um, Mark Pixler. We did, a, we did Mark, a top of the show or something. And boom, Mark, off. Mark Pixler came in. He was our first Patreon supporter. <laughs> and yeah, there was uh, no toplessness. That was a joke. That <laughs> that's our that's our biggest help, Patreon is. I yeah. think we're up to we've got forty six or forty seven Patreons now. 40, patrons 47. now. Yeah, forty seven patrons. Oh, and Tom R just I didn't even know I could. I don't even know how I can claim this money, but Tamar also gave me ten dollars. Thank you, man. It goes into your YouTube. It'll show up as your YouTube, your Google AdSense earnings. Yep. Thank you so much. I I don't know uh, that I could even have that, but I do absolutely <laughs> appreciate that. That is awesome. Um, that takes if you have if you have over a thousand subscribers, uh, your super chat is turned on, and people can donate during the live streams. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I just figured out all the AdSense stuff the other day. Like, really, for me, when I started this, I think I, I think I started a little bit before you guys. When did you guys start? You were a little after us. We were October. We okay. just had our four-year anniversary. We started October okay. of thirteen. So when I started, I just did it as a video blog because I was getting into it, and I kind of was like, oh, "I'll just upload stuff and whatever my friends and family will watch." And then next thing you know, I was I think I was at a thousand subscribers in like the first six months, which was. Crazy. So um, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool that, that everything's gotten like you know to the point where people can support and stuff like that. Um, the other question I was going to ask you guys: a lot of people in my chat ask me this, and I can do this in my area because um, I'm not well known. I don't know if you guys are very well known around town, but a lot of people ask me to try to do videos out and about. What do you guys think about that? We have not been hit up for that. Yeah, a lot of people ask me like, "Hey, go to a bar and like." 
you know, shoot a video or whatever. And I don't know, number one, if I'm even allowed to do stuff like that, but a lot of people want to see kind of like out and about videos. So. No, we've had some cool stuff. We had an owner of one of the bigger liquor stores who partners with some of the higher end restaurants say, Hey, um, if you, you guys want to do a tasting or something unique, let me know. And uh, we do weird stuff every once in a while. We're in the works. I won't say too much, but we're trying to come up with kind of a on the road show. We're calling it like whiskey run where we could do whiskey run KC, whiskey run Denver, where we'll go hit a particular distillery and yeah. kind of make it a cousin Shane's going to join us. Uh, Shakes Pennington's going to join us. So we'll, we'll do a, we're looking at doing a little bit of a live component and a pre-recorded component. And just our whole deal is making whiskey fun. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. A lot of, uh, it seems like a lot of the distilleries are, are pretty okay with you doing some of the shooting, but I, I think it's all outside of the Rick houses. I don't think once you get in there, you're really allowed to do any shooting, at least from what I've, I've heard from other channels. So we'll see. We're going to try to see what we can get done. Very cool. That's all right. All right. Yeah, that was- that was my two questions about Patreon. So, Cousin Shane is our vocalist and Shakes Pennington, for, a.k.a. Cousin Steve. He's actually Shakes Pennington is our guitarist. They provide some uh, inter- musical entertainment for our subscribers. They are good. Our 12 Hours of Boom, they showed up and we did a little singing thing. So who does all the editing? On the live shows, luckily none. Otherwise, we we usually split our editing about 50-50, but Scott's been picking up the lion's share the last two weeks. Cool. Well, yeah, I mean we yeah, we we split it on the on the on the pre-recorded shows. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and then the live shows are nice because they just post. Very cool. Well, All right. Well, hey, um, any, I mean, you're, we're a little over it. Just hit the hour mark. Do you want to keep going? Look at some comments, or do you want to uh, shut her down? Yeah, no, no, I'm good. Whatever okay. you guys, um, shit, you guys are the old guys. So whatever you guys, if you guys got to get fit to bed, I know. <laughs> that time, but. Uh, that's right. And, uh, no, that's if if I had not taken, question. yeah, the Geritol kicked in. I'm feeling good. <laughs> Yeah, let's do some viewer questions. I'm going to uh, actually grab another glass. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'd love to do, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes of viewer questions. So let's. I, I'm trying to pull your stream up to watch your viewer stuff, but um, it's not working on my phone and I can't get it on stream. So um, let's do some viewer questions. They'll almost uh, talk to each other more than they'll talk to us. <laughs> Although uh, Claire's got some good stuff coming in. He called us old farts. <laughs> You just got married. You're going to age decades in the next couple of years there, Claire. <laughs> I'll continue on. I'm going to open up uh, or keep going through this owl rye as we, as we keep going here. All right. Let's, talk about, let's talk about that real quick because I got a sample of that from uh, Claire arranged for me to get. Yeah. Um, and I said, well, I, at first I was like, well, how, what's the, what are those going for? And he said $130. And yeah. I was like, Okay, what's what makes it one hundred and thirty dollars? He's like, well, it's batch one from Kentucky Owl. Yeah, you know, people love their bourbon. So it's all sourced and mixed and and done by, um, you know, the name is escaping me right now. Uh, I could Google it real quick. Um, Brown Brown Foreman, I think. Yeah, but the the, the guy. Um, oh. Claire, Claire says his beard's already turning gray, and then Whiskey Throttle says I'm scary. I'm too scary in person. There we go. Um, so it's good. I think you guys should try your sample if you haven't already. Yeah, sure. I did, and I just did a, a quick hitter, one of our quick hitter reviews, because it was a sample bottle that we got on it. At first, and now I'll tell you, at first I wasn't that impressed with it. It was good. It was a good rye. Um, when I went back and I saved some of the sample for my quick hitter, it was better. And I had let it air 20 to 30 minutes beforehand. Um, and it's still a good rye whiskey. I felt if I had paid 130, I, f- I think I would have been a little disappointed. I felt it was more a, a seven, maybe a 60, $70 bottle. And it really didn't feel like an 11 year old either. It really reminded me of the Thomas H. Handy, uh, Sazerac rye. 
which is like a six or a seven year old rye and a lot of cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, those kind of spices. Yep. Uh, but like I say, still good. It was still a good rye whiskey. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I don't know that it's worth 130. So I think for me, um, it is very much like the I West Midwinter's Night brand. It's almost, for me, almost an identical whiskey with, with a little less of the like gingerbread baking. Um, so for that, I absolutely love it. At the price, I don't love. I mean, trust me, the, you know, you're paying for an age statement and that's it. But for the price, um, I don't love the price. But if I, if I had to put them up against each other, I think I'd take the High West first, which is one of my favorite, you know, more unique ryes. But it's like a dessert ride. It's not as much of a like a like a bitey, meaty ride. So, um, so for for that, I'd say if, if someone was stuck in a, in a pickle between the two at price points, get the High West first, and then maybe this after, and expect it to be really you know mouth coating, oily rye. You know, like baking spices, gingerbread, cookies. It, it's really like it's a sweet rye. It's not a spicy rye. Yes, I would agree. If you get that, then it's good. If you go into it thinking it's like a Pikesville, you guys had Pikesville before? Love it. <laughs> yeah. So if you go into it thinking it's like a hard bite you in the face rye, then you won't like it. And if you like straight ryes, it's not your it's not your bottle. Mm, Pikesville is my number one, baby. Michter's barrel proof right behind that. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, I went to after the Kentucky Out Rye, I went to a sample of the Michter's Toasted Barrel Rye, Toasted Finish, and I, and I thought it was much better. I mean, not much better, but better. So I've had both, and I've had the um, the Barrel Strength Rye, and I'll take the Barrel Strength Rye of, of all of them. That's that's mm -hmm. probably one of my favorite ryes. Now, we did, we did a 16-bottle rye shootout. And of the 16, Bart chose the Pikesville rye, and I took the Michter's barrel strength was my favorite. It was all blind or kind of semi-blind. We had four in front of us at a time. We did uh, brackets, and we knew which four was in front of us, but then we had blind samples of the four, and we chose our favorite, and then it, it, it advanced to a championship. But <laughs> It was good. After that, we advanced. When we did the bourbons, it was 100% double blind. We didn't know – we knew the 16, but we didn't know what 16 were in front of us. Okay. That was I, would like, I would like to point out that Bart said the rye shootout was good. That's because we shot all four brackets in one day. 16, yeah, I was gonna... 16 samples in one day is not good. No, we had to take five days. Uh, they start to taste off. kind of similar by the end. They didn't taste similar, but we were we were funnier about episode three. I can tell you that. We were so, hitting on all cylinders episode three. One of the guys in my channel, I think it was more a comment than a question, but asked, Weller 12 in Southern California will set you back 140 and flies off the shelf. What's a guy to do? So um, and, and that, Weller 12, believe me, I is probably one of my favorite like intermediate whiskeys. And probably for someone that's that's – just getting into good whiskey, I, I think it's one of my favorites. But if you really cannot find it and you want to find something comparable, go for the 107. You should be able to find it. Um, stay away from the Special Reserve, but go for the, the Weller 107, the Antique 107. And if you can't even find that, you should be able to find Larceny in your area. Now, Larceny is going to have a little bit more like peanut taste to it because of the maker. But um, but try Larceny, and you should be able to find that for 40 bucks in, in, in SoCal. So, that, that, that is good, and I'm going to shout out to Stephen Connor's comment, enjoying a dram of Dark Cove CR by the fire, and I want to know if he's wrapped in a blanket. That's all I want to know there, Stephen. <laughs> if you were in the Ann Arbor, Michigan area, you would be wrapped in a couple blankets and by a very big fire because I think it's 35 degrees out right now. Mm, yeah. That is good. Now, I'll tell you, go back to the Weller's 12. I like the Weller's 12. I've had it side-by-side side with the Van Winkle 12, Lot B. I can't tell them apart. And what I hate, um, I did just get, I found a bottle. I got a bottle of 12 the other day here. I had to pay 70 bucks for it, and I hate yeah. that. Yeah. It, uh, the, uh, 35 $40. Come on, people. But yeah. the, the Van Winkle craze, and somebody commented out in California, this is $149. $140. Yeah. 
Of course, we had yeah, a buddy, we had a buddy driving around grabbing them all. And I, I think he found a store that had them for forty six, and he emptied out everything they had. Of what? The well, there's twelve. Who? When? Knowles. Oh, really? Oh, that was a while back. Yeah. It was like three months ago. He he yeah. found me and said, "Hey, I found it at this store." I'm like, "Cool, I'll head down there." He's like, "I bought it all." I'm like, "What?" So that's <laughs> that's why it's jacked up. He found a good deal and he scooped them all. The problem with that was um, that one of the websites I can't remember which one started, and now they've all gone into it. And, and I don't even some YouTubers have jumped on it too, but. When people call it you know, like poor man's pap, you know, you mix that with Weller 12 with, with Antique 107, it's supposed to, to mimic like a Pappy 15 or a Pappy 20. And, um, you know, I've done, I, I've heard, I've seen every different thing on it, but I think the general consensus is that it's it's not really all that close to that. And you're really ruining each bottle when you do that. The Pappy or the Weller 12 on its own is a phenomenal. 50, 60, 70 dollar whiskey, and you should just leave it alone. Don't mix it with other stuff and try it as it's meant to be because it, it is carefully selected at 12 years. So, yeah, yeah. I, and I like the 107 as well. And yeah. you're, you're getting 53 and a half percent ABV there, and it's still the Weller weeded whiskey. And you can bring it down to whatever you want. And it's on, it, you can go into any store here where we are and find Antique 107. Um, Real quick question from a viewer. Has anyone tried, I think you posted this to yours too, because I think he's been watching both, but Slim Drew 23 said, has anyone used a one liter barrel to age around whiskeys? And what have you tried? I tried it. My wife bought me one. It, I, I used, uh, I used a white dog whiskey from a local distillery that usually has pretty good bourbon. I mean, it wasn't Kentucky, but I tried it and I aged it for six months. And, it, and I rotated it just like a big barrel, and it tasted like shit. So, <laughs> so please, please uh, if you're going to do your own stuff, why I would recommend if you're going to do it is is if you can find them. We can't find these in Michigan. Uh, try to get some of the – I think you can buy it at the gift shops. You know, um, Go to Buffalo Trace and grab one of their, their white dogs or their, their white dog whiskeys. I think they have four different white mash bills you can buy. So stick with the good stuff. And um, buy there, buy the Buffalo Trace uh, unaged whiskey. White Dog whiskey is unaged whiskey. So buy that if you guys, uh, you guys are going to age your own stuff. We have not tried that. So, and really, I don't, I don't have any ambitions to try it. I know some people are. It's very popular to get the the little wood cask and age even. Even take, you know, add a bottle. Well, we went to a, one, of the, one of the whiskey clubs here in town, and they had their own cask. And I think they had added, was it Johnny Walker Red Label? Yeah, I think they had a five-gallon cask, and he bought a bunch of Johnny Walker Red and put it in there. And it made it taste like a, a young bourbon. Yeah, Johnny Walker Red's pretty bad for me. So maybe, maybe other people feel differently about that. But I, I, I can't imagine it getting any better. I don't know. <laughs> It, it really um, tasted like a bourbon. It had that oaky kind of flavor to it, and it was already, you know, uh, um, I'm with you. I don't, I don't really drink Johnny Walker Red, but it it smoothed it out, oaked it up, and nobody, when we tried it blind, was picking it out as a scotch. It, it tasted like a younger, heavily oaked bourbon, which a lot of the bourbon guys liked. Hmm. All right, Dave. Hey, right at you here, real quick. Best bourbon you've ever had? Um, looking back here, as if I have it here, I probably don't. I don't know. That's a really good one. Um, <laughs> All right, let's say this. Guess, your house. Your house is on fire, and you can only grab one bottle behind you. Which one? I'm gonna say. Grab? I think my best bottle is probably here, and I. The store picks are hard to say because there's so much. There are some store picks that I'd really like, but if I have to say, like, just best bottle is in like best that you guys could get to, not just being a store pick. I, I and maybe it's because what I paid for it, but when I first opened, yeah, Tom R, thank you. 
when I first opened it, and that's what I just looked at, my Elijah Craig 23 was to die for. Right. And it, after, after even a year of it being, I've had that bottle since, uh, I don't know, four years ago, I think, maybe. After six months, a year, it got worse. It got a lot worse. It got a lot woodier, a lot woodier being open. But Elijah Craig 23, the second it was open, best bourbon I've ever tasted. Nice. If you like like an oak bite, like a big oak bomb. But um, it had some really cool honey and caramel and vanilla flavors in it that I wouldn't expect from a really aged bourbon. And that Elijah Craig 23 was, was really good. And I have an Elijah Craig I'm right now. I have one of these, an 18, and I am so excited to review this on the channel because I've never tried it before anywhere. And I think I'm going to like the 18 almost as much as I like the 23 because people say that that 18 is like the sweet spot for Elijah Craig. So I'd probably grab both of those bottles. I, I wouldn't grab just one. I'd probably, you know, leave my pets behind and I'd grab the whiskey instead. So. Oh, people are right at you now. Right. Now. <laughs> yeah, I've had a sample of the Elijah Craig 18 and, and it was pretty good. Now, I can remember my nephew had to point out several years ago, probably even before we started reviewing, I think it was about 2010, he was in town and we were out at Groves here in town and he bought a bottle of Elijah Craig 15 and it was $55 or Elijah Craig 18 and it was $55. State minimum pricing here is 80 or 89 and you find it for about one, 130, which isn't that bad of a markup. A lot of people don't love the 18. Um, but I think that's only because the 12 year was so good mm. uh, when it was around. So I think the 18 is becoming more of a popular product now that the, the average 12 year is about eight years old. They, or the new Elijah Craig small batch is, is averaging about eight to nine years old. Um, so I think that a lot of people are, are liking this 18 more. Well, and I think the 18 year old, though, hits that point um of not becoming over oaked i've seen some people on the 23 think it's been in the cask too long and that the 18 year old is is just right at that sweet spot i posted something a while back um i think you guys were both like this and it was from buffalo trace i will try to link you if i can't get it now i'll get it off stream um but there's a chart about what happens to bourbon as it sits in a barrel and what happens with the age and what tastes come out from that. Um, and I think you guys should check that out. It's really cool. But it looks like, you know, a lot of the stuff says that somewhere around 12 to 13 years is truly the sweet spot for bourbon. So it was, it was interesting to see. Bart likes them young. He likes an eight-year-old. Only when they're peated, baby. Eight-year-old <laughs> peats are badass. Look at that log of wool in eight. Hello. Hello. You should go buy one. Eight-year-old beats. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't find it right now. But I'm I'll link it to you Try the Ardbeg Arai. What is that? Arai Nom Beast? Wow, I can't pronounce I'm usually good at pronouncing things. Yeah. Yeah. The Ardbeg Arai Nom Beast. Huh? I don't know. Read the comments from Stephen Connor. He oh, says, I yeah. Like the DCCR, I need to try the other hard bag. I have never even heard of that one. Hopefully, it's brand new and I can still get it. I don't, the way that sounds, that's an older version. I know. A little tear came down. Dave, how did you get into whiskey? Uh, Las Vegas. Yep. Went to Las Vegas. Um, and I went with someone that was like, hey, let's try. No, yeah, yeah, you know, it was Las Vegas. Um, I can't remember what bar we went to. Um, it was in the Cosmopolitan. We stayed in the Cosmopolitan. We went to a bar, and they had a cool, like, speakeasy entry. And um, actually, I actually do remember the bar. It was called Rose Rabbit Live, and it was at the Cosmopolitan. Pretty trendy name, but you go in, there's a jazz band. So you go in through, like, four different doors, and you can kind of tell it's a restaurant when you walk in, but you go through all these special doors. And then you get there, there's a jazz band in the corner, and they had everything, everything that, that you can ever have. And someone made me try a couple of things, and I was like, you know what, I don't I don't hate this. Normally I was kind of like a, more of a beer guy, more of a you know, um, mixed drink kind of guy. And, and so I tried a couple, and I think what got me really hooked 
Uh, if I remember correctly, that was when I tried, and, and it, now I hate it, but it was when I first tried um, Willet Pot Still. And it was actually, you know, for me, it was pretty good back then. And so I tried Willet Pot Still, really got into um, a lot of different things after that. That's when I, my first bottle of Blanton's I bought a month after that. And, and that was a great thing to try right coming out of the gate was Blanton's. Um, so I tried some Blanton's, I tried some Eagle Rare, um, and Eagle Rare 10, and, and just went from there. So yeah, Las Vegas was, was it for me. And uh, I'd recommend checking that bar out if you guys ever go there. Um, it is, it's kind of trendy and, and wear nice clothes if you go there, but um, it was in the Cosmo and it was, it was fantastic. So, and if you guys have ever, I don't know if you guys ever make it out more this way, but there's a bar in Chicago called Delilah's and you can try literally anything you want to try. And um, I've been there a yeah. couple times too, and that's definitely like got me. Punk rock stuff. bar. Yep. That's the only place that I've tried uh, George T. Stag. I've never been able to find a bottle. I see I see one creeping back there, uh, Scott, but uh, I've never been able to try one, and I tried it there, and damn, I really wish I had a couple of those. So Now, two things. Del Delilah's Compass Box had a Delilah's blend that they did in conjunction with the owner of Delilah's Bar. No way. That. It is that uh -huh. popular? I didn't even know. Yeah. Um, and the stags I've had the, here's my 16. I've got about four or five ounces left of it. And here comes the baby right here. That's the baby. That's a brand new one. Ooh. The what's the proofs on each? I don't remember. What's that? What's the proofs on each of those? Uh, this year's is a little bit lower at 64.6%. Okay. Uh, last year's was 72.05. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then uh, this is all I have left of my favorite, the 2015, which was 69.1. Okay. He, he would grab that little sample and get it out of the fire. <laughs> yeah, I would. That's a, I can say that George Staggs uh, have been my favorites. Um, so right now, if you read a lot of like different people's opinions, the overall opinion is that Stag is the best bourbon on the market. And from, from what I've tried, not just proof wise, but, but flavor wise, I, I'm going to have to agree with that. But I, the last time I tried one was, was 14. It's been a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, Claire is commenting. Um, he's got Claire has become. I talked Claire into finding the 2015, and I don't know if he'd tried too many of the stags before then. Uh, he had asked what my favorite was. I told him the 2015 stag. I think that's led him to buy several of the stags, and he has at least two or three bottles now of the 2015 stag. One of which, one of which has my name on it. He doesn't know it. Oh, yeah. One of those. Yeah, Claire's a smart man, first of all. Well, or or woman. We don't know. He's gender neutral. True, gender neutral. It's just the third. It could be there's yeah. like three people named Claire in his hood. <laughs> <laughs> or her hood. So then question for you guys. Um, not really trying to knock you for... For, for your age, but you are older than I am. So when did you guys get into it to start, like really into it, and what got you into it? Bart, go. Uh, I'd seen, oddly enough, a History Channel show on uh, the history of spirits. Uh, they really went in depth. I love history in general. And immediately I wanted to set up a scotch tasting, and we had a uh, local liquor store Dave Dvorak, who's, who was on our 12 Hours of Boom, did our first organized tasting, kind of like you would a wine tasting, but he did it with scotch. And uh, Scott just found some recent pictures, I think he put up on Instagram. What was that, 2009? Yes. And that was it. Um, on that one, Talisker, Talisker 10, and the Craig and Moore, what was it, the anniversary edition? What was it? Distillers, Crack and More Distillers. Edition. Distillers, wow! And uh, we were we were off and running. And what did you like in that one, Scott? 
I don't even remember. The Lagavulin was very off-putting to me from the peat. I can yeah, remember that. We were not ready for any peat at all at that point. <laughs> there was a, a Dawini 15 we had in there as well from the pictures. Um, and the the Crag and Moore Distillers Edition, I remember liking yeah. as well. And I've got yeah, to get kind of at the same time that kind of rocketed the, the whole whiskey thing. Right, yeah. but right before that, my wife had gone on a girls cruise with friends and cousins and she came home all excited and she said, I got your dad a big bottle of scotch. They were <laughs> cheap. They were cheap on the ship. And I said, well, that's good, but my dad doesn't drink scotch. And she said, well, that's more for you then, I guess, because I bought one for you too. And I go, I don't drink scotch. And she goes, you don't. I go, when have you ever seen me sitting around sipping on whiskey? She knew you well. She knew yeah. the future. So, and it's Johnny Walker Black. And I thought, well, since she bought me, and it was a half gallon, and I think they were like 50 bucks or something on the ship. So, I thought, well, since she bought it for me, I'll try it. And I sat down and I had, you know, this much Johnny Walker and about this much water and ice. And I thought, that's not too bad. And so over time, that water just started coming down, 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 you know, and the whiskey started going up, up, up. So that's how did that how, go again? What was that? How did that go? That's how we got where we're at. It was like <laughs> Viagra. The whiskey, yeah. the whiskey Thank was God going for the up. blue pill. Wait till you're our age. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so that's like you said, 2009. Mm. Yes. Seven, so eight, yeah. Our, well, our first tasting was in, was in Oh nine. Um, but we'd probably, uh, I'd had a few before that. And I think me and Bart had gotten together before that a couple of times and just had some just between me and him. I used to drink Knob Creek, but that was, you know, every once in a while. So let's reminisce a little bit back then. What could you find on a shelf that you cannot find on a shelf today? See, I was clueless. I wouldn't have even. Yeah, uh, yeah, me too. I wouldn't have even known. It, I, we we thought we here's how dumb we were when we started the show. We thought, man, we what are we going to do after a year of this show? We may be out of bottles. Whatever. There's so many bottles out there. We can't keep up now. Of course, we're doing worldwide. You know, we're doing all the bourbons, the rise. Yeah. So uh, I mean, it's a wide, wide world. I do. Yeah. I remember thinking that as well for our area. I thought by the time we get to our hundredth review, we'll have about reviewed everything here. We're, <laughs> we're coming up on 400 reviews and I can go into any liquor store and find something we haven't had. Um, so I remember back then you could walk in pretty much anywhere and find Weller 12 or any of the Wellers. Um, actually, I remember two years ago, you could find a Weller 107 anywhere. You could find Elijah Craig barrel proof, Elijah Craig, when I first started, at least 2000, I think it was 11. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Elijah Craig 12 year. You know, things that are just gone now at that like 50, 60 or less price point that just don't exist anymore. So, yeah, it kind of makes me sad in ways. I guess it kind of makes me happy too, like because this Kentucky Owl stuff that I think is pretty good is out now and, and High West is doing well and they come out with some good stuff. So there's the good and the bad to it. But I, I think the way whiskey is going, like if you see right about there, I'm pointing my finger, is a Knob Creek single barrel store pick. I think it's going towards, there's just not enough to go around. So they're going to reward these these stores that do and markets that do the single barrel purchasing. I think that's where you're really going to find your best bottles are these single barrels where they pick something that's truly special. So it's kind of neat because, you know, you, it's not just something that everyone can, like, like Stag, that, that's, that's awesome but only so many people can get, you might have a really good store pick barrel in your backyard that you've never discovered that might blow you away. It might be better than anything you've ever tasted. Yeah. That, yeah. True. Yeah. And that's the thing with the store picks and you get some good, we had, uh, I'm telling you one of my favorite examples of that for Kansas. Um, one of our distributors picked out a cask and brought in of a Glenn Rothis. It's a 14 year single cask. Sherry cask edition as one of the best sherry scotches I've had. Thank you, Adam, for picking that bad boy. Yes. 
And that's really cool to see because, you know, that wasn't really a thing when I first started store picks. I think there was one store in our area that had a, um, that had a Eagle rare barrel and, and that, that was it. So it's cool to see now they all have them, at least for all around me, there's probably six party stores within five miles that have some kind of barrel or something. So. Well, and go back up a ways. Claire asked what made us both us and you start doing YouTube reviews. I can tell you me and Bart, we worked together. And we were sitting around and we would have, we're, we're both supervisors and we'd have employees come in the office and me and Bart would be talking to them, telling stories. They'd stay and listen. I mean, until we tell them, Hey, you got to get out of here. You got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bart was like, you know, I do these uh, board game. I hate to say it. I don't want to encourage what? him, but do Bart do says what? Bart does these board game reviews and Ooh. he goes, people send me board games just to review for free. What if we could do that with whiskey and people just send me whiskey? And I said, jackpot, let's do it. <laughs> well, and we were at the same time though, too, we were just getting into scotch and we were watching other reviewers on YouTube and we were thinking we can do it better than they can. We can do it. I don't know better. We can yeah. do it. We can do we it. Can bring, we can bring something they don't, because these look at all these people that just listen to us talk and tell stories and right. us banter back and forth, we can bring that to YouTube and and go from there. Boom. We'll do it different. Yeah. That's the cool part about YouTube, though, is that it's not just like, like I watch the Ralphie videos, and I, and I like watching what he thinks, but like I don't understand about half of it. So, you know, it's not for me. Like I watch your channel, and I connect with it when you guys review. So I think that's the cool part about YouTube is you're never just going to have like, the best channel for some certain whiskey or reviewer of whiskey, you're going to have people that you kind of connect with. Like people on my channel, they say they like me because I'm like humble and it's just a, a true like amateur's opinion of whiskey because I've only been into it a couple years. But then you get people that they want like the true expert's opinion. So if they want that, they're going to go watch like the Liquor Hound channel or they're going to go watch, you know, Ralphie or something. And, and you know, that's, that's just, the difference, like, and I think I have a pretty average palate and a pretty good understanding of bourbon and whiskey, but I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm like an Al Young and I could taste things that you and I would never even notice. So that's, that's why I like YouTube. I think it's a cool place to go find pretty much anything that you want different opinions on. So. Yeah. And I look at, I mean, there's not just one TV show out there. There's not even just one TV network. There's many networks. There's many shows. People watch all of them. Every one of them brings something different, you know, something unique, except for all CSI shows. I mean, how many are there? Like 10 of those. They're all the same. Come on. But hey, Whiskey Watch, he can't believe we're supervisors. It, it, <laughs> Scott, Scott made that up. So, someone probably put one in charge with the other and the other one in charge with the other one. So they think they're supervising something, but in yeah. fact, they're not, they're not supervising anything. Yeah. We supervise like widgets and put them <laughs> little pegs in the holes. <laughs> hey, one, one of these days we're going to be right. Yeah. Have you guys, someone said whiskey in the six. Have you checked that out? I have not seen that channel. That's a good looking man there. Oh yeah. Rob. <laughs> Rob yeah. is Rob is whiskey in the six, and he is many of us male reviewers are jealous of Rob. Right. First okay. of all, the beard, the beard he sports will turn you on. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, we're check we're checking this out right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh no, 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 you're you're gonna fall in love at first sight and with the beard. That's all I'm saying. It's well trimmed. It's groomed. He's a good. Right, so you can't be a model and do YouTube whiskey no, at the same exactly. time. No, he does it. Got, and I think he could break out French on command. That's all. Now, he does. Uh, the thing is, though, the beard goes through different phases. Sometimes it's bushier and a little bit longer, and sometimes it's pretty short and trim, well trimmed. <laughs> I got a little of the gray coming in here. Somebody wants to know if I'm trimming my nails. I should. I think I clicked on something. Uh, my little iPad deal. No, that's your chair. You need to get rid of that freaking chair. <laughs> Bruno doesn't like my wood chair. Quit. Every time you move, the camera switches to you, dude. What? Maybe that is a happy accident. <laughs> I, my chair is um, literally like peeling apart. My wife keeps saying she's going to get me a new one, but chair, office chairs are expensive now, especially like the good ones. So I'm like, eh, I'd rather buy whiskey. 
All right. Well, hey, I think it probably is about time. It's a, we're at hour and a half mark. Woo! Oh, wow. Yeah. Kind of a good yeah. show. Uh, Dave, thank you very much for joining us. I know, and we'll have to do it again. We got a lot to talk about. I mean, we got a lot in common, a lot of different whiskeys and stuff we can look at. It took a while. Well, I don't know if it took a while, but, uh, you know, we had messaged you a while back to come on the show with us, and then you took a hiatus, and then you finally saw the message, and we finally hooked up. I didn't up. Even know there was YouTube messaging until, like, two months ago, so I appreciate you guys still getting back in touch with me. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's not a very good plat. The whole U YouTube is not a user-friendly platform. It's for great me. for uploading a video, but for interaction, like it tells you when everyone comments, but when people message you or post on your wall or whatever, yeah. you know, and I didn't even notice. I didn't even know it was a thing. I got emails, but um, I never actually saw a message. So, yeah, oh, yeah I'm glad that you guys um, reached back out to, to do this. This is fun. This is absolutely fun. And I, I was glad to check out your channel, too. I hadn't I looked at it a couple of times, but I'd never really watched in depth through uh, your videos. I watched, like I said, probably 10 of them just today. I was glad to see that. So I was glad to see you guys doing uh, doing well and uh, people enjoying your channel. That's good. I'm going to break out my clippers. <laughs> well, now, he is, now he is doing it. Yeah, now I'm doing it. Have uh, uh, Dave, tell everybody again the name of your channel. Give them your Twitter handle, your Instagram handle if you're on, on IG, and uh, then we'll close it out. They're all whiskey-blooded. Um can't remember which ones I actively use. I mainly use Facebook and YouTube, and they're both slash whiskey blooded. So definitely um, check those out. Uh, Instagram, I'm on every once in a while, and I, I think it's the same handle at whiskey blooded. Um, but uh, YouTube is my most common platform. You know, the videos I post and uh, the stuff like this that I do. And um, yeah, we still got obviously some people here in my channel. So for those in my channel, Make sure to check out Scotch Test Dummies. Your handle is, is always that, or is it anything different for your social media platforms? On Twitter, we are Scott, at Scotch Test Dummies. On Instagram, we are at Real Scotch Test Dummies. Yep, yeah, I remember seeing that. Okay. And at YouTube, you're just Scotch Test Dummies. Yes. yes. Yep. So yeah, guys, check them out at Scotch Test Dummies. Um, absolutely a cool channel, and it was fun to do this with you guys. And... Uh, to try this different stuff that, that's really fun so yeah thank you again for joining us i think it was a blast and uh i mean like i say we'll have to get back together again for sure in the future so yeah next tasting we'll do elijah craig barrel proof we're for sure doing that we've talked about that enough tonight so we'll do that next time there you go you can always tell a good show when we drift over the hour yep <laughs> all right guys uh thank you so much for having me it's been so much fun to, to kind of meet both of you here and, and have a couple drinks with you all right, scotch it, you oh. scotch gods. Cilantro, dummies. Right,